Hi guys, welcome to Book Time. My name is Julia. Today I am going to be doing a video showing some of my favourite book covers. I was inspired to do this recently by Eva from Eva, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, if it's Eva Strange, like the English word, or Eva Schwanger because she's German, or maybe it's something else altogether. She's actually one of my favourite YouTubers. I will link her channel down below and you should definitely follow her if you don't already because she's very insightful and has a lot of awesome book recommendations. I really enjoy her videos. Now, I was I say I was inspired by Eva because there are a lot of videos on YouTube about people's favorite book covers, but Eva made the point that for her, a book cover had to not just be pretty and have nice design, but also reflect something key about the book, which doesn't actually sound that groundbreaking once I think about it. But when she said it, I was like, oh, I never even think about that. I'm just like, that's pretty, I'll buy it. Um, so I've tried to limit the um, book covers I've chosen to ones that actually do both, that are pretty and where the design reflects something about the book. Like hopefully all covers do, but in a kind of an innovative way. So the first one is Iris and the Tiger by Leanne Hall. This is out through Text Publishing. It's an Australian middle grade. This is designed by Imogen Stubbs, who does a lot of the covers for text publishing and has won a lot of awards. All her covers are basically stunning. Yeah, and this is good because Iris and the Tiger is about Iris, who's here, who goes to stay at her great aunt's estate in Spain. And it's kind of about surrealism. So all the paintings start coming to life or life starts reflecting the surrealist paintings. And Iris, um, in this particular place where this is happening is trying to find out things about herself. And so I feel like this is good because it's got all the surrealist paintings, but Iris herself is in one as she tries to make sense of, you know, her own life and self, um, not just the paintings. So there's that one. The next one is The Illumination of Ursula Flight by Anna Marie Crowhurst from Alan and Unwin here in Australia. This was a total cover buy for me. And I, didn't love the book as much as I thought. It was a three star read. I liked it, but I didn't love it. Um, but I still think the cover is very beautiful and very reflective of kind of the ornamental um, decor of the 1600s when this book is set. And yeah, that all the elements here reflect different areas of interest for Ursula. The next one is Janice Galloway's This Is Not About Me, which is a memoir by Scottish writer Janice, Janice Galloway. This is from Granta. Obviously, they always have beautiful editions. And I just love, it's like this matte cover. And she's got another memoir too, which I don't, I should have bought both. But um, this is a picture of her when she was little. And I just love the matte finish. Um, the colour scheme is sufficiently evocative of... Uh, like the 60s, which is a lot of the time she's talking about because she's talking about her childhood. Um, and yeah, I just think it really suits the tone. But this is one of my favorite books ever, five stars. Maybe I should make a different video about my top books ever because it's really good. The next one actually doesn't fall into necessarily the relevance category. I just thought it was really cool design. This is New Australian Fiction 2019, which is an Australian, obviously, anthology um, which was published by Kill Your Darlings which is um, sort of a literature and culture magazine over here that I used to write for and so I, this was their um, debut anthology sort of publication of collection of fiction and I just love the cover it's super I don't know it's just cool and then the white here is not white it's actually like an off-white and I like it so it's in the video the next one is Pond by Claire Louise Bennett, another of my favorite books ever. This was also a cover by because I just adore this painting of the uh, drake plunging into the pond and the, like just the beautiful feathers and there's like a close up of the feathers on the back. Generally, I'm not a fan of like shiny covers, but didn't care, this picture's just so good. And it's just, there's something about this book is not for everyone, but it's sort of just an exploration of the main character's living by herself in this cottage and it's got lots of very detailed complex like kind of dense not complex but dense descriptions but it's almost like I don't know this idea of like plunging headfirst into your own reflection and doing some deep thinking that's kind of what this book is about 
um, so it, to me it really suits it. And there's a pond in the yard, which she talks about a lot. So yeah, this one is good to me. The next one is Six Bedrooms by Tegan Bennett Daylight out through Vintage. This is another Aussie one. It's a collection of short stories. And this was pretty good. I think I gave it three stars, not because I didn't think the writing was good. It was, but because the stories kind of all blur together. And this book is, they're all, I think all of them are about coming of age. So they're mostly about teenagers. I wouldn't necessarily say this was for teenagers, but probably older teenagers might like it. Um, and learning about sex and finding yourself and all that sort of stuff. And the reason I like this is because the cover, um, well, firstly, it's like a girl trying to sneak out her window. So I, you know, the idea of A, sneaking out and B, like setting herself free or, you know, becoming independent from the home family life that she's had thus far. But also um, the colors, it kind of reminded me of Instagram filters. And to me, that's very, I don't know if, even if teenagers use Instagram these days, but it sort of just reminded me of my youth. Not my teen years. Instagram was definitely not around back then, but my early 20s and stuff. Um, so yeah, I think this cover is very suitable for the content. The next one I've talked about before in my recent Springathon TBR is Arboreal, a collection of new woodland writing edited by Adrian Cooper out through Little Tola in the UK. And I bought this for the cover as well as the content because I like nature writing. And yeah, this is what it says. It's a collection of essays, uh, poetry photos all about different woodlands in the UK and it has a stunning cover with even more stunning end papers the end the next one I also have talked about recently I've got such big piles of books here they're all falling over see shaken houses a lighthouse history from Eddieston to fasten it by Tom Nancolis out through particular books mentioned this in all my recent videos it's about lighthouses it's about sea wash lighthouses ones out on reefs and that's what the picture is on the front. But I also like it because this is clearly a modern illustration of a lighthouse, even though of a reef built lighthouse, but um, lighthouses, these types of lighthouses were start like wood built, started being built in the 1600s. So I like that it's sort of like a modern look at old buildings and that's sort of what the picture says to me somehow I've got a lot of middle grade here too the next two I'm going to show you oh, just spat in my excitement the next two are Kate Millhouse's Millhouse Milford's Green Glass House books the first two Green Glass House and the Ghost of Green Glass House and they're just really beautiful books like they're sort of this matte hardcover and they're quite detailed, just like beautiful illustrations. And I love this one because this is obviously Green Glass House and the entire story takes place inside Green Glass House in a really bad snowstorm. But it's also a lot about people and mysterious going ons in the nearby village and smugglers which come up and down this river. So very relevant and mysterious and perfect for this middle grade mystery. My next one is The Sisters Brothers by Patrick DeWitt also from Granta, again, with the great covers, somewhat spoiled by the Specsavers TV book club sticker. But um, yeah, I love this because it's like the dual, like it's obviously the moon with a kind of, not grimace, but like, I don't know, giving you side eyes. And then it's also the two cowboys. So I like it because I feel like this story, so this story is sort of, it's a Western, but, and it's set, uh, in the 1800s, but it's also like a modern retelling of a Western. So a lot of the themes are more contemporary or like a contemporary take on the themes of 19th century Westerns. Um, and I feel like that, like it, it subverts it a little bit. And I feel like that's what this picture is kind of a bit of a subversion because it's two pictures at once. And it's also kind of comical and the story is quite funny. All right. Next two also cover buys, sort of. I bought them because they were both on the Readings Prize shortlist a couple of years ago and they just have cool covers. <gasps> They're both out through Brow Books who all their cover designs are really good. But um, yeah, Sean Prescott's The Town, creepy as, and this book is creepy. It's just very, very strange and hard to define, kind of like the cover. It's about towns disappearing in Australia, literally down holes, but also figuratively. And it's also about like, capitalism uh it's weird 
but I kind of enjoyed it. The other one is Pink Mountain on Locust Island by Jamie Marina Lau, and this is a really cool cover that is quite evocative. This is a very fragmented narrative with kind of a wild structure and it's also mostly told from the perspective of a teenage girl who is very bored <laughs> and lonely. Well, not lonely, just like the bored loneliness of teenagerhood. But also there's like weird drug deals and stuff going on that her parents are involved in, or her dad at least. And yeah, this just sums up the kind of disjointedness of the narrative quite well. Okay, last two. Here's one of them. I wanted to show you the Stella Montgomery series, of which there are three. I can only find one at the moment, which is the third one. Um, and these are another middle grade trilogy by Aussie writer Judith Russell, but set in Victorian England. Really great, about an orphan. Anyway, she illustrates them as well. And so their illustration of oh, like end papers. She has dotted, like there's illustrations dotted throughout. Let me find one. Some of them are full page and some of them are just smaller. Anyway, the, there's three of them and this is like purple themed and then one's blue themed and one's green themed and they're all super relevant to the stories because they evoke the era and this is like the grim boarding house that she lives in in this story and the other ones have got the relevant buildings that she's living in at the time. So anyway, they're great. I love them. That's the end of this video. Oh, there are two more books that I couldn't find. One is Jess Walter's Beautiful Ruins. I'll put a picture up. I really loved this book. I know not everyone did. And I would say the reason I loved this cover, and it was a total cover buy, by the way. I had no idea what the book was about. I just loved the cover. But I do think the cover's relevant because the book is kind of a sweeping story that crosses many characters and generations. It's not really a family saga, though. It just has a lot of characters. And it's very colourful and bright and evocative. Like, it's got this 60s vibe, and that's because one of the storylines starts in the 60s and kind of continues through. And there's this like harking back to 60s Hollywood and stuff. And then also because this book, it's not like super literary, but it's not super, it's not light and fluffy either. It's kind of a nice middle ground. So it's like quick to read, but has other stuff going on too. And so I like that about it. And I feel like the cover is kind of like that. Like it's interesting and maybe there's some stuff going on, but it's also fun and colorful and like, easily digestible at once maybe and the other one is the art of navigation can't remember the author's name or the publisher soz we'll put them on the screen um also a cover by but this is cool because the like inverted cover image with the sea and the sky or whatever it is um is really cool so the <laughs> book is about these girls who have a seance trying to contact ned kelly who's an australian bush ranger like a criminal <laughs> from a long time ago and um, they end up accidentally contacting this other person whose surname's Kelly in like the 1800s who's a fortune teller anyway it's kind of this wild story that's like got time going all which way and the writing style I've read about half of it the writing style is quite not dense a little bit dense and like you have to concentrate and I feel like this image kind of reflects that as well that is all my favorite covers of books that I own please enjoy and that's all like Eva did I made this video because my brain capacity is low all right guys I'll catch you soon bye